So apparently CBC Radio here in Edmonton donated uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 some odd vinyl records to uh, uh, the Goodwill charity organization. Uh, specifically the one closer to me, the one I regularly go record digging at every few months. Um, I believe this massive donation happened just this past weekend. I myself only learning of it last night. So today, instead of studying for my finals, like a smart person, I, of course, could not resist going to check out what may or may not have happened. And lo and behold, there was at least a whole heck of a lot of records there. Um, I would estimate that just what they put on the floor as of right now is at least 400, or 400, 4,000 plus. So, <laughs> five hours later, um, I have set my own personal record for straight record digging. No breaks, didn't even have a snack in my pocket or anything. Just straight record digging. My fingers were filthy, my fingertips were practically numb. Um, I'm surprised I can still flex my spine. Uh, but yeah, just the same. Uh, I, I did not come out with a whole lot. I came out with about 27. Only 26 I will show you. Oh, I should say only 25 I will show you right now. Um, as I said, most of what I saw in there was from CBC Radio, but not everything I got was from CBC including what we see here right now is 1985 everything but the girl their love not money album uh, here we have a Canadian group called Syrinx who were kind of I guess they were kind of semi-experimental jazz with synthesizer and yeah an experimental trio from the 70s Oops. Now this is fairly exciting, not so much for the musical content, which is, I believe, choir music, all Christmas songs, but it is exciting for me as a record collector because I now have, for the first time, a test pressing record. I can't say I'd ever, I've ever seen one further beyond... Uh, watching hip-hop DJs scratch and they'll have you'll see them they'll have records labeled test pressing sometimes it's, sometimes it's real sometimes I don't think it is but anyways Jimmy Smith groove drops I'm pretty sure this is the guy I'm thinking of he does really funky organ music and R&B soul funk style but it could be just about anything because I believe he has a wide library of stuff the Funeral Factory, Living With Ghosts. I do not know who these guys are. Um, I am hoping that they've probably got like a semi-dark, new wave-ish, almost industrial thing going on. Uh, I didn't see a lot of records like this in the collection, so I'm not holding out much hope. Um, oh, by the way, anything with this weird label taped on means it came from CBC Radio. Um, Teddy Bear, Duke, and Psycho. Uh, I have no idea, again, I have no idea who these guys are, but I could not resist the name of the group alone. So, uh, should be interesting. Uh, Barry Phillips, Mountainscapes. I will admit, I'm, I mainly love the artwork of this, but just the same, it also, also looks to be very synthesizer heavy which is also a plus um, and the sides are like parts one through four or one through eight I should say uh, very I have a feeling it's very Jean Michael Jarre soundscapey epic awesomeness okay this was some sort of tribute to the composer Vares who I believe was an experimental uh, 
composer of the 20th century, I believe. But irregardless, I really like the artwork. Then we head into soundtrack territory here. Um, I have not heard of this movie. It's it's called Fist. It's got Mr. Stallone. Uh, music by Bill Conti, who did the music for the Rocky films. Um, much like he did for another Stallone movie I found here. Oh, what was it called? I can't read it. Um, Paradise Alley. We'll come back. Well, no, we'll just rearrange here. So I have not heard of either of these Stallone movies. One looks to be about, like, I don't know if it's like gang gangsters or unions or what, but should be interesting. But this one, uh, at first I thought, okay, it looks like Stallone had done another boxing picture at some point. But I think it has something to do with pro wrestling, which is a plus because I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. And music by Bill Conti should be plenty interesting. Scrooged. I actually have the single for uh, Annie Lennox and Al Green's track, Put a Little Love in Your Heart. I have. I have yet to come across the full album, so should be pretty cool. Soundtrack to Taxi Driver. Soundtrack to The Karate Kid Part Two, which of which the both the movie and the soundtrack I like more than the very first Karate Kid. Vanishing. Oh, what did that say? Vanishing Sounds in Britain. Sound effects from old school England, we'll say. I'm not sure when this stuff was recorded. Really, This was released in 76, but it's talking about light railways and 1903 election trams. Should be an interesting mirror to the, or window to the past. Robert Frost reads his own poetry. Should be interesting. Now we move into children's records territory. How the rhinoceros got his skin and how the camel, camel got his hump. Stories by Richard Kipling. Narration by Jack Nicholson. Music by Bobby McFerrin. Now that's, that's a three-way combination I could not pass up. Aesop's Fables, as read by Boris Karloff. Pied Piper and other stories, read by Boris Karloff. I actually have another Boris Karloff reads children's stories record, so it's amazing that he did more than one. This I'm fairly excited about. This is Tim Curry, as in the actor Tim Curry, from the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Clue and... Uh, took over as uh, Gomez Adams in the Adams family after Raul Julia passed away. Uh, he was the guy running the hotel in Home Alone 2. I am not sure if this is has any comedy to it, but just the same, it's got David Sanborn on alto sax. You didn't see that. Marx Brothers Movie Madness on the radio. I'm I'm not sure what the content of this is actually. Um, I'm a huge Marx Brothers fan, I should state. Uh, the, the titles of the tracks are very strange. It, it's referencing movies. So I don't know if they're playing clips, audio clips from the movies as through an old radio show. I don't know. Because the Marx Brothers did radio programs as well. Um, just saying, I'm kind of wary of this because the radio label or the record label here is Radiola. I, I saw quite a few of these Radiola releases. They put out um, albums of old radio shows like Dick Tracy and some westerns and whatnot, and it seemed to be a kind of came across as kind of a sketchy record label, like maybe like low end bootlegs. So we'll see what that's like. An interview with Peter Sellers on BBC Radio 
should be interesting. Speaking of Peter Sellers, I hit a lovely little cachet of The Goon Show, an old BBC radio program from, I believe, the 50s that featured Petey, Peter, <laughs> Petey, Peter Sellers, Harry Seacombe, and some other fellows. It was kind of a precursor to the experimental left left turn, left turn, left turn sketch comedies of Monty Python. It's a huge influence on it. If you ever get a chance to listen to The Goon Show, you'll definitely you'll definitely see where Monty Python got some cues from. So, yeah, as I said, I spent five hours at the least digging through 4,000 plus records when I should have been studying for finals, so I will now get back to studying for finals, and I so I don't know when I'm going to be recording and posting samples from these records, but at some point I will, but probably not till the end of the month. Otherwise, keep digging, folks. Keep them fingertips dirty, but not numb like mine were today.